Greetings programs, Atari here, you there, and this is the Califone 1430K record player. Um, part of a larger project where I am refurbishing, renovating, and uh, rebuilding this, uh, this here piece of kit. Um, first thing I gotta do is tear it down. So, uh, without much further ado, here we go. So, <clears throat> Let's just go ahead and open her up. So uh, here is the instruction manual for the Califone 1400 series. It's just pasted to the uh, inside of the lid here. It is extremely dirty and dusty and um, covered in mildew or something. Uh, so I've got to figure out how to clean this uh, without damaging it too much. Um, it's funny, you can see oh, here is a little note that uh, my friend Adam uh, stuck in there when he, he was playing around with this thing, oh gosh, probably 20 years ago now or close to it. And um, it, it wasn't working and I didn't have the time or inclination to um, do anything with it at the time. So um, he also enjoys uh, repairing vintage equipment. And uh, so he took, a, he took a look at it. Uh, one Saturday and just uh, resoldered a couple of connections and, and bent a few things back into place and and uh, mobs your uncle here it is um, so oh thank you Adam for all your help so long ago and here we are going to do this thing uh, proper justice now um, so um, the 1430k uh, this is a fairly common system in the uh, 70s and 80s, it, really up through the 90s. Uh, this was being used a lot in school systems in the United States, Some, sometimes in Canada, um, though it wasn't as popular in, uh, in Canadian markets as it was in the U.S. educational market for whatever reason. Um, I think they had like, I'm trying to remember the brand name they had up there. Um, I was doing some research on this and I forgot what it was. Um, if you know, drop it in the comments in the doobly-doo. Uh, this particular unit did come from my uh, home school system uh, in Cobb County, Georgia, but it did come from uh, Rocky Mountain Middle School, I think. Is it Rocky Mountain Middle School or Rocky Mountain Elementary School? Either way, it came from a different school on the other side of the county, on the rich side of the county, from where I grew up. But, uh, but it still has... The um, you know property of Cobb County Schools, uh, serial number, property number, uh, library number, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's it. It's a uh, steel casing and a wood outer shell. Um, so built to last, built to be bulletproof, um, AC drive. It is it is all the niceties, and uh, so we're going to. Uh, we're gonna take a look at what makes her tick. I like this. It's uh, it's got springy feet, so you can you know it's like earthquake proof kind of. Um, uh, caution: no user serviceable parts inside. Challenge accepted. So here we go. Let's dive into this thing. Oh. So I think, if I'm right, it's just a bunch of screws holding the thing together. So it should be fairly easy to come apart. There was a screw. I think there was a screw that went back here, and for whatever reason, it's not there anymore. Ooh, that always sounds lovely. Ah, uh, um, so I have an interesting history with this uh, particular unit. Um, like I said, this, is, this, uh, this was used in the school system where I grew up, and um, these things were kind of awesome. They were just absolutely bulletproof. And I remember when I was a kid uh, at my elementary school, we had like a listening center, like set up in the corner somewhere. In the corner of the classroom, it was like a little bookshelf, you know, a couple of bookshelves kind of uh, cordoning off a little corner of the classroom. Maybe there was a couple of beanbag chairs or something in there and a 
uh, a Caliphone record player and um, some headphones. And you know, if you were if you were doing you know listening center, you could go over there and listen to whatever was on the shelf. And I used to listen to. I remember I used to listen to like the Letter People and come and meet the Letter People, come and meet the family. Follow me to the letter people. A, B, C, D, follow me. And um, there was probably like some schoolhouse rock in there or, you know, and just educational stuff. Maybe some books on record. Um, just little things that, you know, elementary school kids would listen to. Um, and I remember, so... So, interesting story. Um, I was in, this is probably kindergarten, and so this is like 88, probably, 1988-ish. Um, so, brand new to, like, public school, right? Like, brand new to this whole, like, school paradigm. And um, I remember I was sitting... Sitting listening to something, and I, I want to say it was the Letter People because I really liked the Letter People back in the day. Um, I want to say that's what it was. Uh, so, I, I was sitting and listening to something in the listening center, um, listening to a, a record on one of these record players. Uh, I don't know if it was a 1430 specifically. It was probably a 1430 because this is a very familiar model to me, but maybe that's just a false memory. I don't know. Um, so, is that it? That's all of them? Yep. Um, yeah, nothing on the bottom. Uh, so, all right, got all the screws out. Let's go ahead and. Uh, that should just. This all should just slide out somehow. There it goes. There it goes. Ooh, ooh, lovely. Ew. There's a big old capacitor on there. Let me, um, let me turn this thing around so you can see. Yep. Oop. I'm putting a lot of strain right there. Okay, so there's that. Um, I feel like the best way now to get some of these things going. That's power. Right? Yeah, that's power. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm got myself good there. Uh anyway, um so where was I? I'm torn arms. Okay, so I got I need an open here, and I need to. That's actually really nice. The speaker floats like that's actually something you didn't see a lot of that I'm aware of in something like this. The speaker actually floats, so it doesn't buzz and vibrate. Um, also, probably so it doesn't ground against the chassis, but whatever. Um, I guess it could theoretically ground against the chassis, but you know, I guess that's going to be uh, not often. It is nasty, though. You can see. Let me zoom in on this. There we go. You know where that is. Pretty nasty. So that's probably going to need to be replaced. Uh, with something a little modern, uh, a little better condition. That's just disgusting. Um, uh, this thing's definitely going to need a, uh, a good cleaning. This is actually OSB, looks like. Pretty solid OSB. Um, so not like... Oh, this is plywood. This is plywood on this side. 
That's OSB on that side. Huh, interesting. There's an OSB on the interior, too. Uh, well, maybe it's... I don't know. Let me get a better look at that. Anyway. Oh! Yeah, it's like OSB on three sides, and then, like, plywood on one. Plywood on the bottom. Ah, where it counts. See, that makes a... That may, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, so I need to... I don't want to desolder anything yet, if I don't have to. Um, let me see if I can just... Okay, those are just spade connectors. They're just good old spade connectors, so I should just be able to... Yes, pull those right off. and all kinds of crap in here. All right, this is where the uh, mains cord uh, just sits. This is a little caddy for the mains, mains cord there. Um, let's do... Uh, and the only way to get that off is to actually uh, disconnect it. Well, actually... Like mechanical connection here. Um, it's a mechanical connection to the uh, drive. I think it's a direct drive motor. That's interesting. It's actually not a. Uh, it's not a belt drive motor. It's that is. No, no, it's belt drive. That's yeah. Here's because here's the spindle right here. This is the motor, so it is. It's either belt drive or it's friction drive, and I can't tell yet uh, what it is. So let's just keep working at it. Okay. So um, next thing I need to do, I don't, I don't want to desolder anything if I don't have to. Not yet. Um, I'm still trying to get the lay of the land here. Um, Problem is, I have my mains power uh, coming in from over here, so I need to uh, basically pull this in. I, I have this little retaining pin here, and I'm just bringing that up out of the way. And I basically just have to feed all the... Okay, just sit there. And feed all the cable back through here. that works. I don't know how many more times I could do that with that plastic, but it works for now. So um, there's that. And then, yeah, so this is the base uh, with our floating speaker, and that's the caddy for the, um, the power cord. And this is actually really cool. You don't see this uh, on electronics anymore. Um, you don't see this on electronics anymore, but I have a schematic for the circuit board here. So that is uh, that may uh, come in quite handy when I start trying to reverse engineer this thing. Uh, especially because uh, it looks like it looks like this is essentially all of the circuit boards, and just depends on what was. Um, what was actually put in here. Um, so this is a schematic for the 1410, the 1420, 1430, 1435, 1450, and the 1455. So if, uh, if there's no other differences on this board, I may actually just be able to wire up uh, stereo out, um, stereo in, stereo out. And that might, that might be much simpler than I anticipated, so we'll see. Um, <clears throat> but for now, uh, we can move this guy out of the way. Since you're out of the way, and then we can go 
concentrate on here. Make sure I'm not, I don't want to butter up the tone arm or anything. Looks like that's actually just clipped in somehow. I wonder if I can just pop that out, but I'm not sure. I don't want to do it yet. I know I got these guys right here that I can take off, so that's no big deal. Um, so we have a AC motor, and this is ostensibly the uh, this is ostensibly the uh, spindle for the platter, and it looks like it's direct drive. Looks like it's direct drive, or it's, um, can't tell, really can't tell. This is definitely the spindle, though. But where, what's driving, what is driving the platter? I don't know yet. It, I can't tell. I can't tell if it's, I don't think it's a belt drive. I think it might be a drive wheel. Um, that would be right here? Yes, right here, the drive wheel, but I don't see anything turning. So we need to dig a little bit deeper. So we need to figure out how that attaches. Looks like it's riveted on, but that's all. That's no fun. Riveting, riveting things on here. That's just... Why do you do this to your father and I? Yeah, that... It looks like the whole drive mechanism is riveted onto the... Um, riveted onto the, the uh, chassis. So, we're going to have to see how to do that. Maybe I can just take the... Maybe the platter just comes right off with because it's got a... It's got like a lock washer on here. Maybe I can just pull the platter right off. That might work. So now I think the best thing to do would be to get the electronics out and then I'll worry about the motor last. So, uh, hmm. Let's see. So it looks like, it looks like, I don't know if you can see, it looks like, um, the, um, the actual potentiometers are holding this board on. This is the entire amplifier board right here. So uh, if I can get those off, I should be able to take this whole thing off. Uh, so start taking the knobs off. They should all be out. Yeah, they're all identical. So it shouldn't matter. And then go back on. Okay. And then so I'm going to take these nuts off. Yeah, that'll work. Oh, there it went. <laughs> Go ahead and just take these guys off for good measure, so I'm not stretching any wires or anything. off. That's our board right there. Look at that. It's a fairly simple. Love those resistors. Those carbon, old school carbon film resistors. Those beefy carbon film resistors. 
We got a couple of transistors on there, a couple of capacitors, two humongous capacitors there on the back. I'm not entirely certain what they're for. I think they're signal filtering capacitors, looks like. Just because they're it's attached to the um, attached to the speaker line, the speaker out. So I think that's just a filtering capacitor. It's a humongous filtering capacitor, but a filtering capacitor nonetheless. Okay. Uh, and interestingly, I don't see anything leaking, so that's always a good sign. But I may not even use this at the end of the day because this does uh, look to be, looks like it is a, looks like it's monoaural. Um, I don't think it's a stereo amplifier. So if it is not a stereo amplifier, I can't use it. I'm just going to have to uh, come up with something else. But you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna take oh God, this tape. Ugh, tape is so old. Right, let's just take this stuff off. So I finished telling the story. Um, so we had these at my elementary school, and we had a little listening corner. And uh, let's see there. Pop that out there. Pop that out there. And this tape's just about had it anyway. Um, so we had that little listening corner, and I need to grab a. Uh, I need to grab a ring tool. Okay, so I still can't find my ring pliers, so we're going to do this the uh, <clears throat> uh, other way. So let me just kind of manhandle this a little bit. Okay. There. That's taking the tone arm out. Okay. Uh, which is not exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, that just takes the whole tone arm out. All right, take the whole tone arm straight out. I uh, don't necessarily need to do that, so let's just put that right back on. Put that right back on for now. Oh, I I, I guess I do need to do that because I'm going to take those off though. Um, but. I'm going to have to desolder these leads. Damn. Ah, uh, damn. All right. Maybe not. Maybe not. Not yet. Not yet. If I can just pull this stuff out of the way, I think we'll be okay. All right. Let's go and get the transformer off. Huge step down transformer. Like, I love that this thing is so ridiculously solidly built, but I also. I don't, it makes it harder to work on. <laughs> I guess that was by design. I do have the service manual for this as well. So, I mean, if I need it, I've got it, but I shouldn't necessarily need it. Oh, blimey, that's not going to do anything. Oh, that's why. There we go. Just kind of pull this stuff out of the way. All right. So that just leaves this guy. And this is the retaining pin, I do believe, for the platter. Okay. Let's peel off. And 
platter should just come straight off. Yes. This thing's, this thing's actually heavy. I mean, it's steel. It's heavy. That's uh, yeah. That's a real record player right there. That's that's why I like it. It's freaking. It's like Soviet engineering. Simplify, add weight. Okay. And that just leaves. That's the drive mechanism. And you know it is a. Uh, it's a wheel drive. Okay. All right. Not by me. Works for me. So this mechanism changes the speed somehow. I'm not quite sure if that rubber. Rubber seems like it's in good nick. It's not cracked or anything, so that's good. That's good. Um, well. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, here we go. Here we go. That's how that works. Freaking duh. Okay. I'm pulling them out of the way. All right, so you see here, we've got these uh, different diameter these different diameter uh, spindles essentially and that's attached to the shaft on the motor so as the motor's turning um, we can shift up and down so that would be 78 it's the widest that's the widest of them And that would also turn the fastest. It has the most angular, ang has the highest angular velocity, which is to turn uh, further, which is going to spin this faster, which is then going to spin this faster. Uh, and we go down to 45 RPM. Uh, this is interesting. The zero, zero just disengages it, uh, it looks like. It just disengages, yeah actually disengaged from the uh, drive there. And then 33 and a third. And 16. Of course, that's all spring-loaded, so it's all going to be on there just fine. So that's our drive mechanism. It's just our, uh, that's just the shaft and the bearing inside. Um, I do need to clean this up a little bit. It is kind of nasty in there, like hair and dust and stuff, like 40 years worth of hair and dust and crap in there. So I'll clean that up. I'll clean that up a little bit. And then, um, and then we'll be in, we'll be able to put this all back together and make sure that it's nice and level. Make sure it's all nice and level. That platter should be straight as a die. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. Okay, and then there's this little guy. This is sort of the heart of part of uh, one of the problems anyway. Uh, inside the tone arm here, uh, you can see we have this little tiny uh, cartridge here. And uh, this is actually, this interestingly, this is actually a two-sided cartridge. You can actually, you can take it out. You can take it out and you can actually flip it over. Uh, one side is designed to play uh, LPs and 45s. The other side is designed to play uh, 78. So it has a different needle on either side. Now this thing is so, it's worn down. It's it's 40 years old. It's the, this is the original cartridge, or very likely the original cartridge. Uh, so this is all worn down. On top of that, you can look here. There's only two little wires. There's only two little wires coming off the cartridge here, which tells me that this is a monophonic cartridge. Uh, now, it's stereo compatible. All that means is that it's 
able to read the stereo grooves on a on a stereo pressing without actually damaging it like uh, the 78 would um so at the end of the day it just gets it's just one signal that goes through the amplifier and gets processed as a single mono auto output but what i would like to have is stereo output i would love to be able to listen to my albums especially like stuff like pink floyd or the who that really messed around a lot with stereo technology stereophonic technology at the time uh, i would love to be able to actually listen to those albums the way they're supposed to be listened to um Unfortunately, I won't be able to do like quadraphonic or anything like that, but at least stereophonic will work. Uh, but I'm going to need to replace this whole unit here because they didn't make these styli in stereo ever. Um, or I should say they never made these cartridges for stereo. Um, so I'm going to have to find some suitable replacement that will fit right here um, and still offer me the option of playing 78s uh, or LPs. Uh, so I'm going to have to dig around and see if I can find a modern cartridge. Because these are, you can still get these A-Static uh, 89T cartridges. Uh, you can still get them, but they're expensive. Like, they're they're kind of stupidly expensive now. Um, because they're not making them anymore. Because they only made them for really this. Um, so I would like to replace this with something a little more modern. Uh, and I'll, I'll do a little research and find something that will work there. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to rewire the whole tone arm. And, uh, and probably uh, come up with a new amplifier design. But that will be forthcoming in another number. Okay, so the very last thing I want to look at is the actual uh, cartridge and the cartridge mount inside the tone arm and kind of see how that's done to see if I can use the existing mounting hardware that's in there or if I have to actually like rebuild this whole thing or even replace the whole thing. I don't really want to do uh, because I, I feel like I feel like I want to keep the original tone arm and perhaps just add a counterweight to the back just to lighten the tracking force just a little bit because this is a very heavy needle. Uh, it's a very heavy stylus. Uh, it requires about an 8 gram tracking force which is not great for records. Um, it's not terrible uh, but it really isn't good for them, especially if you listen to them a lot. Um, I, I know... Uh, uh, tell me how wrong I am in the comments, uh, audio files. Go ahead and tell me how wrong I am down in the comments, and uh, I'll continue to ignore you. Um, but, uh, yeah, the... Yeah. But the, um, the A-Static uh, 89T cartridge that this thing uses is it's it's a relic and not only is it a relic but it is just you know it's hard to find and it's heavy and i i don't want to use it if i don't have to so i have uh, a couple of mounting I, I i might be able to put in um the crosley style cartridge which everybody's going to <gasps> you know bad to worse uh, actually it's probably worse to not as bad but um um, I'm, I'm trying to remember there is, there's a higher end replacement. Uh, it's the, uh, Phil, I can never say that it starts with, a, it's like PF something, something, it's a Swiss, it's a Swiss made, uh, cartridge. And, uh, that I, I was looking around at a few of them. They're, they're kind of a universal fit. Um, and they have, uh, screw mounting, uh, very similar to this. And I may actually be able to to squeeze that in there as a cartridge, um, as that cartridge assembly, and then just replace the stylus as necessary. It would be very similar to what was on like the 1100 series, earlier, like the late 70s series, before these came out, those were actually stereo. Um, I could possibly get one of those because it uses the same stylus, um, but I, I'm just gonna have to, I'm gonna do some research on it, but I may, just be able to use this existing mounting point and I hope I can I hope I hope I hope I can uh, because I don't really want to mess around with the track light um, I really like that I love the track light I love the fact that you can you you know it's got a little little lit up place where you can really see the tracks really well it is an 18 volt lamp that's in here I I've 
I'm thinking about replacing it with an LED, but I'm not entirely sure I want to do that yet. Um, I might just wait till it burns out because it's it's still got some life in it. It's still pretty bright, so maybe I'll replace it with an amber LED. Maybe I won't, but uh, that's it's not uh, off the table entirely yet. Um, if I have to rewire this whole thing, I may just go ahead and do it. Uh, but uh, we will see. We will see. Um, okay, so that's it. All right, so uh, that is a Califone 1430K uh, torn down to uh, pretty much everything that I can get to without uh, completely wrecking this mechanism and uh, uh, starting to drill out rivets. So I don't want to go any further than that. So that's, that's what that looks like. Um, we'll do a little bit more on the board. It's, I may do a little bit more on the board itself later, uh, just going through the uh, circuit diagram uh, because I do have that. Um, go through the circuit diagram and all that in another section of this project. So check out all of that in the show notes down in the doobly-doo. Uh, things over here, uh, social media over here is video that YouTube thinks you'll probably enjoy. Show notes somewhere right around here. My name is Atari, and until next time, remember, it's okay. It's just prototype. Rally ho, y'all.